You are just, O Lord, and your judgment is right. Treat your servant in accord with your merciful love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May, al <clears throat> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him away from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Mirabah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other commandments there may be are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> I think many of us remember from the time of our childhood hearing our teachers and parents say things to us like, don't worry about what anyone around you is doing so long as you're doing the right thing, or else we remember telling our own children that, um, those kinds of things. And uh, there's a lot of wisdom of telling a child uh, not to worry about uh, anybody around them, just to follow instructions and uh, make sure that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing. We don't want a child to be distracted by others misbehaving, that, uh, that they forget to listen and to do what is right themselves. We want children to learn from an early age that they each have control primarily over their own actions. And secondly, that they can be a help to others simply by their good example. But there is also a danger in taking these words learned from early childhood as the only maxim by which we live. If we never move beyond the challenge to look out for ourselves, we could lead others to believe that being a responsible person, being a good Christian even, means nothing more than being responsible for our own actions. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus does indeed instruct the disciples about the need for personal conversion. While so many were looking for a Messiah to save them from a political or social mess, Jesus is first of all concerned about particular souls, each person right in front of him. We never hear our Lord say, amen, amen, the problem with the world these days is. Um, but instead he says to those who listen to him, amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. He prepares his disciples through repentance, acknowledgement of their own sins so that they can be freed from them. He tells his disciples, for instance, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. In short, Jesus proclaims the kingdom of God by calling each of us to that conversion. And that conversion is very personal. In the scriptures today, we see that the journey to our salvation is still personal, but it is not therefore private. It is not one of 
isolated individuals or just a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus that ignores everybody else. As personal as it is, it is also communal. I, um, personally, I blame uh, Pizza Hut for some of this confusion between the words of personal and private when I, re I remember um, a time when we would read a certain number of books and Pizza Hut had a uh, personal pan pizza uh, for each student to uh, their teacher uh, recommended them to having read a certain number of books. There's nothing personal about a little piece of dough covered in cheese. Um, it's just that it's too small to be shared with anybody else. So that's what they called it. Sometimes we get confused and, and people will ask, for instance, um, will, will you tell me of your, your conversion story or, or how uh, the two a married couple met? Uh, tell me about uh, your story or is that too personal? And uh, meaning is that too private or is that something that can't be shared with other people? Uh, but personal, I would say it is personal uh, the way that uh, God has worked in my life and, and my uh, my uh, call to, to the priesthood, for instance, but it's not private. It's something that I'm happy to share with other people, as personal as it is. Well, in our first reading, God shows us the responsibility, especially of those in authority, to preach the truth and turn people away from their sins. And the Lord says through his prophet Ezekiel, speaking to him uh, very personally, if you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, then you will be held responsible. So that, uh, that mission for him is to make known uh, the whole message of God uh, to, to the whole community that God has called and set apart. Bishops, priests, and deacons especially have this responsibility to speak the truth to the faithful, even when it's something people don't want to hear. The Pope was asked to address, to address engaged couples in Italy, and knowing the sins that afflict his people, uh, Pope Francis said to them, I do want to say something that is not liked, something that's not unpopular. He said, even the Pope sometimes has to take risks on things to tell the truth. Love is in deeds, in how one communicates. Love is very respectful of people. It does not use people. That is, love is chaste. And you young people, he said, in this hedonistic world of ours, in this world where only advertising, pleasure, the good life prevail, I tell you, be chaste, be chaste. So the Holy Father knew that he was called to be a watchman and must turn his flock away from sin lest they die in their sins under his watch, that he could not remain silent. That was not an option for him. And this is a good opportunity for all the lay faithful to pray, first of all, for the watchmen of the church, that they keep watch with courage and not let the Christian faithful die in their sins under their watch. Now, before you start to think that the role of keeping watch and turning people away from their sins is one just for the clergy of the church, we turn to the gospel. Jesus said to his disciples, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. Jesus, of course, isn't speaking to an actual family about blood brothers. He's speaking to his disciples about how to respond to a fellow disciple of Christ. His message is clear. We are more than a collection of strangers who happen to live on the same planet. Each of us shares in the responsibility of keeping watch. We are responsible for each other just as members of a caring family are responsible for each other. Jesus knows that it's not enough to tell us, offer each other uh, correction, that we, most of us, need more guidance than that. The prophet Ezekiel might, <clears throat> might not need more specific directions than that, but the rest of us probably do. Thomas Aquinas uh, speaks on the virtue of fraternal correction, and um, that, that uh, speaking of that as a virtue, that's uh, something that uh, we should live as, um, as a virtue, uh, and first of all, that the aim is always the salvation of the person in danger. Reconciliation is the goal, not condemnation or retaliation. So the temptation when somebody sins against us might be to tell everybody, everybody except the person who can do something about it. But the gospel prescribes just the opposite. Don't run out and gossip, smearing somebody's reputation. Just speak to them gently, one-on-one. -on -one. If he doesn't listen to you, maybe he'll listen to a group of friends 
who know that they care enough about him to speak to him honestly and lovingly and can confirm the facts. We see in the gospel that the truth does matter. It's not about expressing personal preferences, dislikes or pet peeves to someone who's upset you. Rather, the facts need to be established and the truth affirmed. That's the purpose of bringing in other people who are not the injured party to help see things clearly and to make a sound judgment. And if that fails to win him over, our Lord says, go to the church, for we are not a collection of strangers, each of us on our own private journey to heaven. No, we are members of God's family. And God has given us to each other not to ignore one another, but to care for one another, to help each other by sharing the truth and the love of the Lord. It's not only the sound doctrine and worthy reception of the sacraments that are necessary for a Catholic. As faithful Catholics, you must also take good care to tend to relationships with one another so that you can live out the precept of our Lord to be an instrument of winning back your brother. Now, when our Lord says, if he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector, this really speaks to the unity of the church which Jesus Christ established. There is but one church, not this church or that church, different denominations that each decide how much of the gospel that they want to live and how much to omit. And Christ clearly bestows his authority upon this church and gives her the responsibility of excommunicating members and of restoring penitents back into communion when they're ready to be reconciled. This is what it means to treat him as a Gentile or a tax collector. It doesn't mean they're forever forgotten about. Just the opposite, the church proclaims the kingdom of God and the call to conversion to Gentiles and tax collectors. And that's what the church needs to do to those who have received the gospel, been brought up in the faith, maybe even went to Catholic schools, K through 12, and a Jesuit college, and is now living a life of duplicity, considering themselves exempt from the worship of God, not caring to live a life of chastity or self-control, living in many respects a hedonistic life, giving a piece of their heart to so many things, but not very concerned about being pleasing in the sight of God, their father, or obedient to their mother, the church. When you see God's children go astray, it is your responsibility to strive to win over your brother. St. Thomas Aquinas describes for eternal correction as a virtue saying that charity should, go, charity should so guide our feelings that we wish all to be saved. Consequently, we ought to do, do our brethren the kindness of correcting them with the hope of God's help. Uh, one author also says, apparently Jesus does not see this as a haughty behavior incompatible with Christian humility. So you might often be accused of being haughty or being uh, proud to correct somebody. Isn't that, aren't you supposed to be a humble Christian and uh, never correct, but just be a nice guy or a nice gal? But uh, this is not, uh, in fact, the message of the gospel. Our Lord sees no contradiction between uh, the humility that, uh, that he himself is, is meek and humble of heart and wishes his disciples to be so, but he himself corrects uh, the sinner and wishes his disciples to do the same. St. Ho <clears throat> Jose Maria expresses uh, how we can um, both be helped by other people's correction and uh, seek to help others in, in a virtuous way. As he says, you may often have to rebuke some, someone but you should be teaching him how to correct a defect, never merely giving vent to your bad temper. When you need to correct someone, it should be done clearly and with kindness, even with a smile if that is suitable. It should never or very seldom be overpowering. And he says, don't neglect the practice of fraternal correction, which is a clear sign of the supernatural virtue of charity. It's hard because it's easier to be inhibited easier but not supernatural. And for such omissions, you will have to render an account to God. When you have to make a fraternal correction, do it with great kindness, great charity, in what you say and in the way you say it. For at that moment, 
You are God's instrument. Finally, Jesus in the gospel does show us the goal, that working together to confront sin and remain faithful to God's love makes us powerfully united. When we come together to pray, Jesus is in our midst, and he promises our prayers will be heard. We pray today that all the leaders that God has appointed in his church will be faithful and courageous watchmen to keep the church from sin. And we pray for all the Christian faithful, each of you and, and all of our, our church, that each of us here may be faithful to our responsibility, first to turn away from serious sins ourselves, then to, be op to open our hearts to whatever correction we need throughout the course of our lives, and to be grateful for correction when we receive it. And we pray to know ourselves as responsible for helping our brothers and sisters turn from their sins that together we may receive our salvation. Believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have all gathered here, dear brothers and sisters, to celebrate the mysteries of our redemption. Let us therefore ask Almighty God that the whole world may be watered from these springs of all blessing and life. For all our church leaders, especially Pope Francis, Bishop Burbage, and our parish priests, that they will preach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that together we promote the common good of all, safeguard the sanctity of marriage and the family, and defend the rights to life and to religious freedom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For justice, security, and peace among nations, and for those who serve in our law enforcement, military, intelligence, and diplomatic services to make peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of the war in Ukraine, the withdrawal of Russia, and the restoration of justice and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians who face persecution and genocide, especially in communist and Islamic countries, that the Holy Spirit will keep them strong in the faith. And for all non-believers, that the Holy Spirit will move them to faith in our divine Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people who have begun school, that the Holy Spirit will guide them to do their best and make good decisions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the acceptance of vocations to the priesthood and religious life, that young men and women from our own families will heed Christ's call and offer their lives to him who give his life for us and for our parish seminarians, Deacon James Joseph, Gabriel Godet, Michael Gibbons, and John Anthony Bono, and for Sister Monica Baptiste Whalen, 
and Sister Abigail Therese Jones, novices for the Dominican Sisters, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and homebound, and for our deceased, especially those we remember, as we mark the anniversary of 9-11, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Danielle Gentili, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our own personal intentions, which held in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May your mercy we beseech you, O Lord, be with your people who cry to you, so that what they seek at your prompting they may obtain by your ready generosity through Christ our Lord. Our second collection is to support our, religious, our parish religious education programs. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a, <clears throat> in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Agnes, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is thirsting for God, the living God.
So just a few parish announcements as the second collection's being taken up. Our poor box collection today is for the Red Cloud Sioux Indian School on the Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. It was founded by the Jesuits who are still there helping. All high schoolers are invited to the school year kickoff this coming Tuesday. So September the 12th from 7.30 to 9 in the school gym. Come join us for fun, games, friends, snacks, and tips for practically living your faith as a teenager today. So please see the bulletin for details or you can stop by the table during Donut Sunday over in the parish hall. Please take home a copy of the bulletin. Everything is beginning to start once again. This Tuesday, religious ed classes begin. So please, if you haven't registered your kids for religious education, unless they go to a Catholic school, please do so. I'm always disturbed when I find children that after second grade, they take a vacation from religious ed until seventh grade when it's time for confirmation. Religious faith formation doesn't work that way, just like we don't take a vacation from elementary school. So if you haven't done so, please do so as soon as possible. Also this week, the St. Joseph's League starts, so all men of the parish are invited to attend. We'll be over in the St. Thomas Moore Room next door to the Adoration Chapel. Next week, Bible study starts on Tuesday, on Tuesdays, inquiry class on Wednesday. So anyone here who isn't Catholic, but you'd like to know more about the Catholic faith, maybe interested in even becoming a Catholic, your loved ones come here with you at Mass. And then also, anyone who's an adult Catholic who wants a refresher course, or even a teenager, you're welcome to come to the inquiry class. So Wednesday, We'll have Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament here in church. We were delayed by a week because they had to do carpentry work for the organ, but that's finished for now. And so we'll have Adoration on Wednesdays here beginning after the 9 a.m. Mass. Conclude at 7.30 with a holy hour where we'll have the Novena to the Miraculous Medal, opportunity for confessions, conclude about 8.15 with benediction. Next Sunday, Little Sisters of the Poor will be visiting, so they come once a year to raise money. That's the only way they can support their homes. And then finally, the Boy Scouts do invite you to enjoy coffee and donuts after Mass over in the Parish Hall. You can ask questions about any of these announcements that I have just made. And now we have someone from Walking with Purpose, which is the women's Bible study, who will be talking for just a minute about that. Good morning. My name is Mary Grace Tillotson, and I'd like to tell you all about Walking with Purpose here at St. Agnes Parish. Walking with Purpose is a Catholic women's Bible study that aims to encourage women to explore their faith, apply scripture and prayer to their daily lives, and nurture a personal relationship with Jesus. Every woman is welcome at any season of life with any level of past experience. This truly is a ministry that is changing hearts and transforming lives of women. This month begins our ninth year at St. Agnes, and last year over 80 women of all ages participated in the study. This year we are offering two studies on both Tuesday nights and Thursday mornings. The first study is Opening Your Heart, which is our foundational study for those new to walking with purpose or Bible study. The second study is Touching the Divine, which will focus on the Gospel of St. John. Participants in Walking with Purpose have seen the scripture study strengthen their prayer life, increase their participation in the sacraments, and provide an opportunity to form authentic friendships with women here at St. Agnes. 
Last spring, I attended a nationwide walking with purpose conference called Flourish. It is good word to describe what can happen when 700 women participate all at once. The speakers were well known, quoting the Bible and scholars profusely, encouraging, reminding us in every way that we are God's beloved daughters. I especially appreciate a quote from Pope Benedict. One who has hope lives differently. Perhaps walking with purpose could make this difference for us this year. Please come, ladies. Even if you have completed either or both of these studies before, we are a powerful help to one another in ways we may not even know. Our first meetings will be the first week of October. Please feel free to stop by the table outside church or at Coffee and Donuts to find out more or register for a study. All are welcome. Thank you. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.